Hi, this is Tirza at BetterBreastHealthForLife.com. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to use a tri-filled meter to measure the electric, magnetic, and radio frequencies from this 2011 Toyota 4Runner so that you too might be able to learn how you can measure your vehicles at home or any that you're thinking about purchasing. So first, a little information on the tri-filled meter. I obtained this one from Amazon.com for around $100. You'll notice it has three scales on it. So the top scale is measuring magnetic frequencies between 0 and 100 milligauss, and it also measures electric um, voltage in regards to volts per meter. The center scale is measuring magnetic fields again between 0 and 3 milligauss, so it's very refined. And the bottom scale is measuring radio frequencies, and those are measured as microwatts per square centimeter. So you'll notice also that there are dots along the scales on the left-hand side and solid bars on the right-hand side. So any uh, reading that is in the dots range on the left-hand side of the scale is considered within safety limits for human exposure and readings beyond that in the solid bars are considered unsafe. They exceed safety limits for human exposure. So let's start by um, showing you that the EMF meter right now is off and when I put it to battery test you'll notice the dial um, goes far enough along the scales to help us understand we do have enough battery charge to conduct this test today. So now I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and get in my car and I'll show you how we'll actually measure the EMF being emitted from inside the cabin. Thanks. Okay, so we're ready for our test. You notice the car is off, uh, no power, no devices are on, and we'll go ahead and start the tri-filled meter. I hope you can see this. So I'm going to start by just looking at the magnetic between 0 and 100. If you can see that, it says 0. Switching to magnetic between 0 and 3 milligauss, it still says 0. Electric frequencies, 0. And radio frequencies are 0. So actually what I've just done is I've checked the ambient environment to make sure there aren't any um, frequencies um, being delivered to this location from other sources beyond the vehicle. So none are present. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the vehicle without having any of the audio-visual, LCD display, navigation system, communication systems on. They'll, they will all be off. So we won't expect to detect any radio frequencies, just electric and magnetic fields. So here we go. So the meter is currently registering zero radio frequencies, kind of nearest the dashboard here. And if I switch to the electric is, is emitting zero. And if you can see that, so the meter is now off the scale in regards to magnetic field between zero and three milligauss. Now the safety limit for human exposure for magnetic fields is 2.5 milligauss. So this is exceeding 3 milligauss. Now let's switch to 0 to 100 to see just how high it goes. It seems to be hovering around 15 milligauss. I don't know if you can see that or not. So anywhere I go, whether it be the dash, near the steering wheel, near foot and calf, don't know if you can see that. Near the organs of the abdomen or our breasts or our head as a driver. If you can see that, you'll notice the dial is far to the right. So, you know, they say most cars actually emit between 30 and 80 milligauss in the magnetic field. So this one's actually doing pretty well. Uh, when I have it touch the dashboard, it's at 35. So wanted to demonstrate that. You, you can't get away from those magnetic fields because electric current creates magnetic fields. So there's lots of wiring and cable cabling. There's computer parts sensors, instruments that are electronic, so there's a lot of electric flow
through our dashboards. So all modern day vehicles are going to have electric current and create magnetic fields that exceed typically uh, 2.5 milligauss unless you get an old like 1980s, 1990s car that doesn't have computer um, parts or electronic components. So let's now go ahead and turn the meter off and let's talk about radio frequency. So all cars have electric current especially through the ignition um, alternator even the tires as they spin are going to be creating electricity and the electricity the currents that are flowing through the car don't get grounded to the earth but they get grounded to the chassis the frame of the vehicle and so they all create magnetic fields so the greater the power or the greater the electrical current the greater the magnetic field so while we're not registering electric current per se with a meter we're registering instead the created magnetic fields now, radio frequency should only be emanated when we have Wi-Fi devices, wireless devices, satellite communications. Um, I have actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, the NAV system, the LCD display, my audio-visual aid right here. And as I do, I will then um, uh, check Pandora and Sirius satellite and the tuner for AM, FM, as well as the NAV system itself. And I've actually done this before, so to, to save you time, what I want you to know, if I put this on radio frequency right at the source, um, th there is none. Whether I, whether I have it on, on, on Pandora, Sirius, or GPS doesn't matter, and that's because the signal from this device isn't coming from here. It's actually wired to an externally mounted antenna on the roof near the rear end of the vehicle. So the RF transmission isn't coming from here, it's coming from there, which is good. So the way I would sabotage my car's lack of radio frequency is to use a cell phone in the vehicle. So we know all cell phones emit um, high microwave radiation to transmit um, signals to towers. So if you'd like to learn more about the, the, the health hazards and the safety tips for cell phones, I'll talk about them in a moment here in the car. But if you'd like to learn about those in general and see tri-filled meter readings of cell phones, please go to betterbreasthealthforlife.com, uh, click on preventive support, and click on the articles entitled cell phones and cell phone safety tips. But if I were to use a cell phone in this vehicle, as it would be true in any vehicle, what happens is the radiation that's emitted, the signal that's emitted from the cell phone, is trying to get to the tower. But because of the metal framing and the chassis and, and the glass, you know, reflective qualities or properties of the materials with a vehicle, what's going to happen is some of that radiation is going to get trapped inside of the cabin. It's going to re be reflected back, actually amplifying the cell phone radiation. And so it's actually safer to use a cell phone out in nature let's say rather than in the vehicle and also keep in mind that when you don't have strong signal strength with the cell phone um, it takes more power for the phone to transmit the signal which equates to more radiation so as you're moving in your vehicle going from one cell tower to another your phone is constantly trying to get strong signal strength and e emitting more radiation to do so so it's best to be still rather than to be moving find a strong signal strength and stay in that spot then your phone emits less power and less radiation it's safer for you to use more information like this is at our website so I wanted to show you that while magnetic fields at least in this Toyota 4Runner far exceed safety limits it's pretty much true in every car it's hard to find a car that would have less than 10 milligauss readings uh, in regards to electrical current of course all cars have that um, that is supposedly less of a concern to our health than the magnetic fields and uh, what's more concerning than the magnetic fields would be um, the radio frequency if it's not being handled well in a car so externally mounted antennas are great for mitigating that and it can interact with everything you're trying to communicate with cell towers and satellites uh, you can buy those aftermarket as well from car toys uh, uh, emfnews.com there are other sources as well and remember when you use your tri-field meter to check your vehicle or any vehicle you're, you're going to be testing uh, for purchase make sure you check the driver area the front passenger area 
and the back seat area, especially if you're considering a hybrid. Hybrids typically have batteries in the rear end and more EMF radiation under that back seat where often children are being transported. And um, their little bodies actually can absorb more radiation and have more illnesses that result like childhood leukemia um, than adults that might travel back there. So if you're electro hypersensitive, as well you might want to try to find the seat that's safest for you if you're a passenger um, where is their lowest emf if at all possible so i hope you found this helpful again for more information on cars and emf and healthful tips in their use go to betterbreasthealthforlife.com click on the preventive support page and then read the articles on cars and emf and helpful tips thanks